Well, here we are in ISO. Who would have believed 2020 would begin like this? Uh, I think as artists, we have to use it to our advantage and have some fun. So that's what I'm here for, for you. Uh, in the next number of videos that I'm going to share with you. <clears throat> I'm just going to share some things that I've learned over the years through workshops um, and other artists, um, lots of reading, um, YouTubing, uh, get out there and get as, as much um, visual as you can. Um, please uh, bear with me as this is the first time I've done this, so it's a little bit nerve wracking. Um, yeah, I just want to show you uh, what I've learned that'll help you with your journey and um, you can take it in whichever way and make your own unique art. So today I'm going to show you my favourite things and over the years I've learned a lot of favourite things, um, techniques, um, products, tools, um, things that you pick up along the way and uh, take it in your own direction. So just going to show you a few of those things today. Uh, I hope that you lots of fun, lots of experimenting and accidental mark making and um, trying to make you a loose artist and that's my aim. So hope you can join me. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, a few of my favourite things. Number one, stick, a long stick with the brush. On the long stick just take the brush to the long stick and if you're holding it hold it right at the end so that you have no control and just twist as you're going very free and makes you very loose loose mark making so we'll get that um, let's start with maybe I'll just start with a little bit of blue high flow acrylic which is golden uh, ultramarine blue, high flow means it's very liquid. Just putting a bit of that out now. A little bit of water, brush in and let's go. Nice loose marks. Just let the stick take you for a walk. Around. It's just to start with nice free marks to get you going. Next I have my favourite brush, which is one of these flat ones often use brushes they're about my very favorite just nice and springy nice flat edge and it springs back when you go like that so very important using with my favorite brush I have the chroma krill gesso primer which is a favorite of mine because it's translucent and cheap so it's um nice and cheap and great to blend with so while I've still got my blue is a little bit wet it is warm today so it's taking not very long to dry so I'm just getting in and I'm going to blend some of this out because I'm not sure what I'm going to make today but this is what we do with the gesso it just brings in, oh look how quickly that's dry, brings in the colour and you can still see the marks behind and it's just very soft. It's one of my very favourite things to do. Just old paintings cut up. That might look nice, the orange and the blue. Just tear out a little bit of that colour using Liquitex Gloss Medium my favorite go-to to stick to varnish and to glaze make sure you get all over the back and just stick in a little bit of collage just haphazardly don't try and plan it too much make 
make sure the brush goes back in the water or you will have a hard brush. If you get a hard brush, you just grab your brush cleaner. Chroma, again, incredible brush cleaner. <clears throat> and it is incredible. It will bring your hard brushes back to normal. Just soak in overnight and a miracle. Okay, I've got my little bits of collage. Make sure they're stuck down. I'm going to introduce you to a few of my favourite transparent paints today because you must have transparent in your kit always. They are great to offer contrast against opaque paints. They just make your painting sing. With the white paper underneath, it is beautiful. So this one is Transparent Red Oxide. It's an atelier. And if you look at the colour, it's just so rich. Beautiful for landscapes. Just beautiful. So that's your Transparent Red Oxide. And then I have the Matisse Deep Rose Matter. So a bit more pinky this time. Ooh, so this one actually got a little bit of the ultramarine mixed in with it as I was using my brush. So that's a beautiful dark purple colour. So yes, you can mix them all. Let's try it again without mixing the blue in this time. Okay, so here is the red, just shines. And because it's transparent, it show, the white paper underneath makes it glow. Now, if you're not sure how to tell, on your paints there'll be a little square or a, a round circle. Now, hard to tell with my paints because they're so messy, but that square hasn't been coloured in, so it's transparent. If it's coloured in, it is opaque. Okay, and the next colour is Transparent Umber, which is a little bit browner. Just a darker colour. Beautiful. Just perfect if you're doing landscapes. And last but not least, this is a, a fluid Australian Sienna. Beautiful mustard yellow golden colour. A little bit of yellow, mustard. You can mix it with the other colours and just nice and earthy, beautiful colours. Going to grab a little bit of that blue. Give you a little bit of an abstract happening here. While I've got that blue so nicely and nice and wet, I will use my stick, which is another favourite of mine. Stick. Just start scratching through a few little bits of texture. Whoops, gone a little bit far. It's only thin. By the way, this paper is from Ikea. It's a roll from the children's section and it is perfect to just roll out and do exercises like this. Look at that, just beautiful texture coming through that colour. Okay, now I have some spray bottles which I keep with my liquid watercolours in. And just to add a little bit of background in places. Look at that, just adds another dimension. This one's pink and a little bit of a rusty colour, which adds to that earthy look. Um, another, again, scratching through that dried very quickly because this is quite porous, this paper. But see how it follows the line of the ink. Fun. Okay. Another couple of fluid colours which might go nicely in here. This one is Fluorescent Pink by Golden. High Flow. Look at that. Just beautiful. 
just when you need a pop. And this one is Quinocridone Magenta by Golden. Again, it's a ready, ready colour. Add a little bit of water and look at that colour, just beautiful. So they are your transparent colours and they have a really good job to do within a painting. Okay, pastels. I love my pastels. Actually, before I do that, I'll use some more of my gesso to show you how we can transform and add a little bit of tone. So let's get in and pick up a little bit of this pink. A little bit of the blue coming around. And a little bit of this pink. Look at that gesso, just yummy. yummy. Just adds another dimension. Okay, maybe a little bit of Art Spectrum Orange ink this time. Um, just sprinkle because it's the right colours. I'm using lots of warm colours with just a little bit of the blue. Favourite spray bottle. A bit of a spray, let it move, let it mix in. Okay, stick again, a little bit of fiddling. Right, uh, the gesso isn't quite wide enough, so I get out my titanium white to really give it a hit where I want to put some more opaque colour. So this is your white. And it mixes with those colours. It's just beautiful. A little tree maybe up here. It's just playing. Okay. Now I also have the liquid watercolour in a bottle with a nib. And these are easy to get from $2 shop or wherever you can find them. And this just gives you a chance to give a little bit of a scribble. Just let it scribble. You can then give it a spray or just let it dry like that or get your stick and move it around. Okay, opaque colours now. A little bit, we use the transparent, um, cadmium orange, Atelier Interactives. These can be moved again once they are wet. Once they dry, you can re-wet them and move them again. Okay, I love using my fingers. I don't mind grabbing my finger. It just feels so close to the painting. Give it a little bit of a highlight. Just playing, uh, nothing in mind really. Posca pens, beautiful. Poscas, very acrylic pens. www.artmarkers.com.au Cheaper than anywhere I have found. Because they're acrylic, they are opaque and they will go over top of your other colours. So, just adding a few little details. Some colours are better than others. You have to shake them and make sure they come down. Okay, lots of playing. Stay tuned for my next part two of this and I will show you the rest of um, my favourite things that I have learnt over the years. Thanks very much.